Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi. Amma ba'd al-kabir as-sabi'a wa sittun al-mutaffif fi waznihi wa kaylihi. Number 67. Al-Dhahabi rahimahullah says al-mutaffif. He says is one who cheats and swindles and shorts the people with regards to his weight and his measure, with regards to the scale, with regards to the volume. Someone who shorts the people, cheats the people, swindles the people, and also demands from the people that which he does not give them with regards to trade and commerce. Everybody understand this? First and foremost, initially, speaking about the wazin, the scale. A scale. Now, whether you're selling grain or spice, these types of commodities, now, volume, measure, al muhim. That's initially. Just like we have the concept of khamar. Allah speaks about khamar in the Quran. The Prophet speaks about khamar. The Sahaba talk about khamar. Here, Umul Khabaith. As they say, the mother of all vice, the mother of all evil. Tayyip. Obviously, they are initially speaking about a drink, actual wine, liquor that comes from dates or honey or anything like this, barley, hops, whatever the case may be, you know, a liquid. That's what it's initially talking about. And then it also encompasses, includes, and entails any other means of intoxication, whether it's liquid, solid, dust, powder, glue. Hmm? Everybody understand this? And this applies here as well. Initially talking about the scale. It wasn't the cadence, the measure. But it's also applied to what? As well. Such as a delete button. Nam? Or return button. Or a briefcase. Everybody understand this? Or an arms deal. Or oil or natural gas. Or bananas. Everybody understand this? Or a canal. Any type of thing that you're demanding from one party, but you only give back, if that. Swindling someone in your transaction. Everybody understand this? Whether it's a bag of rice, or whether, as we said, it could be a canal. It could be a major huh, aspect of your country's resources. You swindle them. Everybody understand this? Manipulate them, huh, and rape them out of the deal. You demand more, you only give what? A bit, whether you cheat and hide it from them, deceive them, put sihr on their eyes, hmm? or whether it's just through your policy. It's just an unfair policy. Everybody clear on this? Is the guys, everybody awake? Definitely. Either or. Whether it's cheating, you don't see, they don't see, you're quicker than them, slyer than them, smarter than them, faster than them. Something's wrong with your scale, you have an electronic scale, nam? Nah, it's rigged. The weights are rigged, or something that you're selling is hollow, whatever the case may be. Or whether it is the actual policy, what? Itself. Itself. It's swindling people. It's robbing people out of something that they honestly deserve. And you require, demand, and <coughs> clearly want full measure, full weight, full due. This is what you owe us. And we only want to give you? I understand this is a very important concept to understand. It's not just stealing. I understand this is not just what? Stealing. stealing. It's much more than stealing. The thief is different. It's not just that, but it's also greed as well. I deserve full. You only deserve a little. Or less than what you're supposed to get. Maybe not a little, you get a lot, but not what you're supposed to. Which is oftentimes based off of other things such as pride such as prejudice, such as racism, such as colorism, such as tribalism. The reason, no, 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 don't give them that. They don't need that. Everybody understand this? These people, they're only, they'll be happy with what? The scraps that you give them. That in itself is enough. We're of a nation, a race, a people, a place where we're enlightened and civilized. We need everything up front and full. They're savages. You give them a couple things like this, and that's more than what? Enough. 
Everybody understand this? Everybody with me or not? This is the, so it's much more than just what? Stealing or cheating. But it's oftentimes based off of something. Motafif is someone whose heart is just a nastiness and a disease and a sickness. Well, I need all mines. You don't need all of yours. In most cases, not all the times, but oftentimes based off of what? Other jahiliya elements. As we just made an example of. And history is the best teacher for this. History is what? Best teacher. Best teacher that how the heck did they sell this city for $25? Everybody understand this? How did they sell this country or this piece of land, this state, this huge chunk of land for what they got? Because they were swindled. They were cheated. They were deceived, tricked. One way or another, they were forced into the deal. Everybody understand this? But the deal, the original deal was based off of what we just said. We need this land. We need this property. We're going to cultivate it. You don't know how to cultivate it. You have no clue. You don't care about cultivating anything because you are inferior. inferior. Racially, religiously, what? Inferior. We are racially, religiously, politically, da da da, military. What? Superior. Everybody understand this? And that is also, that's clearly based off of what? Pride. Pride. Everybody understand this? Or it could be based off of stinginess. Being a miser, which is also what? No doubt. A disease and a sickness as well. Everybody understand this? It could be based off of cowardice. You're afraid that your, your supply will go short. And that Allah's rizq will stop. That's a disease. Being scared, being afraid, not having certainty. But why do you still deserve what? I want to say it or not. I don't have that much to give. I'm afraid. But at the same time, I need everything. So the disease is still what? In the beginning and the what? In the end. Everybody understand this? So this pertains to the measure initially, the old ways of buying and selling and bartering and trading. And I'll pull to this what? To this day. Many, it's very important for us to understand this, guys, is that we're not just reading some old ancient book of fables. And stories, as what many people may think and feel, even if they don't say it with their tongues. That the Quran is a story book. It's a dogmatic book of ancients. And that's it. Everybody says, no. It's pertaining to anything that can happen today. Everybody understand this? If the word arrow is mentioned or sword, it also pertains to <laughs> bombs, killing people, oppressing people. Everybody understand this? Shedding blood or burning someone. Chemically huh, wiping them out. There's no difference. The concept it always remains what? Same. same. Man doesn't change. Technology advances, but man is always the same. There's always going to be greed. There's always going to be cowardice. There's always going to be a hero. There's always going to be compassion and mercy. There's always going to be lack of compassion and mercy. There's always going to be inhumane behavior, whatever the case may be. All right, but I'm saying is that is not that doesn't what? That doesn't change. Khayran, inshallah. So the author says this is a major sin. And we said that it's very important in 2017, in light of the different attacks and the different uh, slander that's hurled against Islam and the Quran and the Sharia and Hadith and Sunnah and Islamic culture, and they get this into the people's heads. We can't get them to reject the Quran 100% from day one. Not this generation at least. You're too old-fashioned and traditional. But your kids, we can weaken their faith and their understanding. And get them to think that the Qur'an is not a book of anything modern or at all. It's a good thing that you believe in it. It's, you know, a legend, an ancient type of thing. But your modern politics, social issues, modern style, this, that, that's nothing to do with Islam. How you, how everybody understand this? And it's, this is addressed in many ways. Style, fashion, clothes, culture. I'm American, first, Muslim, later. It's different tricks and ways that they throw this at the Muslims because they know they can't just talk to somebody that comes from Bangladesh or West Africa, don't believe in the Quran. It's just not going to work like that. It's not going to work like that. It's too embedded in their hearts. It's too embedded in their hearts. The Iman is there. But maybe we can't get them to disbelieve, but we can make them have major doubts. We can shake them. And then the third generation, atheism. Homosexuality. There is no such thing as the Sharia. The Sharia is unjust. It's inhumane. It's barbaric. How can a man get more than a woman in inheritance? That's unfair. The Quran clearly says beat women. Well, how can that? Doubts. Politics. Societies. Why do all... I got an email the other day. Literally. 
He said, the proof that Islam is false is that all Muslim governments and regimes, they're totally, uh, they lack transparency. None of them are transparent in their dealings. None of them. Somebody says, the dalil that the Sharia is false is that no one wants to what? Why does it, if it's so great and perfect and merciful, why does any country want to what? Adopt it. They heard these doubts. Imagine stuff being thrown on somebody that's weak in college around Kufar with a scholarship. It's going to have an effect. Except for the people that Allah Azza wa Jal shows mercy. Everybody understands so what they say. If the Sharia was so beautiful, then why doesn't what? No country. This, that, that. Everyone wants to be secular. Everybody understand this? And all types of things. I was born this way. Whatever doubt that they use, why they have a May Allah protect us from this. And one of the ways of this being successful is not having the understanding of the application of these things. A scale. Uh, two pieces of weight and an electric scale or a computer. It's no what? It's no difference. Everybody understand this? He says, so this is a major sin. Then obviously, there are many different issues that pertain to this, such as which can, what can you cannot trade and barter with measurement or volume or size? Yesterday, we were in a meat market. And don't, please don't ask me about this. Just mention an example. Don't ask what's the ruling. When a meat store, Sheikh Khan, up the street, and he had ground lamb, it was $6 a pound, halal, zabiha, whatever, and the lamb was in a bag which was solid frozen. So we initially thought, okay, so he picked it up and he put it on a what? Scale. Scale. Is that permissible? Is that lawful? Can you sell meat like that with weight, with money, let alone he's measuring something that's solid what? Frozen. So the thing is going to be what? Heavier or even maybe? Lighter. Maybe lighter. The water, the liquid. Everybody understand this? I don't know him. It's not as natural what? Everybody understand this? What can and cannot be what? Sold with regards to wazin. Hmm? Khayr. That's enough. Call Allah Ta'ala. The author, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he says, remember we, we explained to you the method last night. Naam? Moving forward, inshallah you lose out on the benefit. May Allah help you. No. lil mutaffifin. Allah says, woe to people who are mutaffifun. Woe to them. What does this mean? Woe, wail. Does it mean it's a special place in hell for them? Curse. A major blame. Them being censured. Them being warned. al it's nothing what? Positive. We can agree on that. There's nothing what? Whatsoever, it's a disaster, one way or another. Allah says, Who are the mutafifin? You ask, Allah says, yastawfuna. He says, When they seek measure from the people, trade, weight, amount, yastawfun. There have to be what? Every grain, every ounce, I need mean, everything. That you what? That you owe me. Wa kaluhu. Allah says, but when it's their turn, then they do what? They cheat. They huh? swindle. They don't give you everything that you deserve, everything that you, oh, that you uh, deserve from them. Allah says, don't they know? Don't they realize that they're going to be resurrected? Allah is going to ask you about every ounce, every gram, every grain. That Allah sees what the other person in the store can't see because their hands are quick or you rigged it or the scale is in the back or the electric. What, don't you know that Allah knows this? Allah sees this. Don't you know that this dunya is what? Wow, temporary, quick, short, hop, skip, and a jump, and you have a gray beard. Teeth fall out, hair falls out, back becomes weak, huh? And you go to the grave. Don't you know that you're going to be brought back to life? Allah says, Liyawmin Azim. He says, for a, a major day, a tremendous day, not a small day, not a simple day, not going to court, standing in front of the judge with a lawyer. This is going to be a serious day, indescribable day with regards to resurrection and you standing in front of everything that you put forth on your life on earth. Allah says, On the day in which Anas, everybody, the jinn, the demons, and the human beings, 
black, white, yellow, red, man, woman, everybody is going to stand up. The rich, the poor, the noble, the slaves, the peasants, the people who had the different classes and categories. Ah, none of that today. Everybody's equal today. Everybody understand this? Like Aisha radiallahu asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, about the people being naked, their nakedness, uncircumcised, no shoes on. He says, what about men and women? Won't they look at each other? He says, it's going to be deeper than that, Aisha. You think people are going to have that on their mind on that day? That's not going to be on their minds. It's going to be terror and fear because it's a reality. In this ayah, Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُمُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ in which everyone will stand in front of who? The judge? No. The UN? La. Everybody understand this? You're going to face sanctions. You're going to face this. You're going to be la, 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 la. This jail, this imprisonment. No, no, no. Nah. Allah, Rabbul Alameen, who does not oppress, who does not wrong, who does not forget, who does not make a mistake, who knows everything, encompasses everything, sees and hears everything, records everything, who is most merciful, most kind, and who's severe and swift in his punishment, stern in his punishment. It's not a joke. So this goes to show us how when someone doesn't believe properly and understand properly, it's going to have an effect upon their actions. One of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why they stole, why they cheated people, why they did these things, because they didn't believe in resurrection. And we can see that today among the people who do not believe in no religion. There's no, there's no such thing as ethic or moral. There's no such thing as right and wrong. I got to get mine. Why the other people that say, I worship money. That's my deed. That's my religion. There is no right and wrong. Rules are for fools, they say. Do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Are you understanding this? Or certain people who say that Jesus died for my sins. So I don't have to stay away from this and do that. I just believe in it. Or go to church once a week. That's it. Because he... The aqidah is wrong, it's jacked up, it's jammed up. The philosophy is messed up, the action is going to be what? Yeah. Messed up. Or even worse than that, wali adhu billah, the Muslims. Not necessarily worse, but closer to us, the Muslims. Iman is in the heart. Allah is most forgiving, brother. You don't believe that? You don't understand that? You have doubt about that? You act like you do? Because everything you do is haram. And everything is bid'ah. Don't, you're so strict, you're so severe. You don't believe in Allah's maqafira? You don't believe in Allah's mercy? What Quran are you reading? My Quran, my translation says Allah is what? But you say everything's haram. How many Muslims have this understanding? You don't have to wear hijab. There's no, you don't have to pray five times a day. You live in America. You can take the ribat. You can do this. You can do that. How many Muslims they have this understanding, this misconception, and it leads them to make what? Evil, wicked deeds. Or the Muslims who are better than them, who know that Iman is not just in the heart, who know that there are responsibilities, but they're heedless because they're around Kufar every day, all day, or sinful Muslims, and they forget about their true self. Huh? And the proof for that is, is that when you get in a cab, or on a train, or in a restaurant, you may be dressed like a Muslim, or you say, as alaykum, when they see you reading a book, you see, like it refreshes them and it reminds them, oh, you're a Muslim too? You read Arabic? Or where are you from? It's like a whiff of fresh air. Because they're around kufar and kufar all day, every day. Uncovered men and women, homosexuals, music, not even haram things, just the dunya. Money, business. It hardens the heart. People, when they forget, they become further and further and further away. And the closer someone is to the reality of resurrection, the proper understanding of resurrection, the reward, the fruit, the punishment, what's going to happen on resurrection, and also being reminded of it on a daily basis, no doubt, the closer, inshallah ta'ala, he's going to be to what? To righteousness, by Allah's permission, if he wants to, of course. Some people, they read the Quran every day, and it doesn't affect them. Everybody understand this or not? So this shows us that their bad aqidah led to their bad what? Action. Cheating people, the orphans, prostitution, riba, killing people, murdering people, whatever the case may be. Burying girls, whatever the case may be. Because their belief was what? It was bad. It was messed up. And this is one of the most important, striking differences between the Prophet ﷺ and his people in Mecca. They rejected resurrection. It doesn't make sense. When we die, when we turn into ash and bone, when we, we're going to be brought back to life? No way. That's a legend. That's what the ancients used to say. 
Uh, that's outdated. That's a fable. That's no, that's, that's we just something we told our children to be afraid. Look at the people that Allah talk about. They say the what? Same thing. Religion is only used to control people. Religion is only used to make people afraid. The devil is no such thing as the devil. The devil is only used to do this, to do that. It's an old story. That's sad. It's the same thing that people say. This is something outdated. It's out. It's not it's, ah, expired. So, Al-Dahbi Rahim al says about this ayah, وَذَلِكَ الدَّرْبٌ مِنَ السَّرِقَةِ وَالْخِيَانَةِ He says, and this is a type of two things. He says, stealing and treachery. It's a type of stealing and also a type of treachery. He says, وَأَكْلِ الْمَالِ بِالْبَاطِنِ Last but not least, the third hammer blow, he says, in eating the people's wealth unjustly. All three of them are major what? Sins and problems to steal, to cheat and be treacherous, backstab someone, and also to eat people's wealth what? Unjustly, robbing someone, swindling someone. Hmm? So this is a major sin. Let us beware ourselves. And let us warn those that we have the ability to warn. This uh ta'ala should have a profound effect on the Muslim's work ethic. How you work. You put in much more than what you demand. You make sure that you give that what you're supposed to and more. Mm, your standard. And not the opposite, which many of us are. Last but not least, I'll say this. With regards to the modern Muslim situation in America or Canada or the UK, wherever you go, Australia, New Zealand, wherever you go, the concept of the imam and the administration. Oftentimes, administrations of masjids, they fall in this ayah directly. That when it comes to demanding things from the imam, they want all of it. We want every class, every khutbah, every counseling session. We want you to be in the masjid and sit in the masjid. Even when there is no class, there is no salah. But we want you to be there. Huh? On post, 24-7 basically. But what we give you in return, we don't have that much. We're a small community. Or we'll pay you, but it's nothing according to what you what put out of time and effort. Everybody understand this is a reality. And many people, they have this mentality, this miser mentality. There's something wrong. You go to a community and you do a khutbah and you talk to the imam. You sit and eat lunch and he's stressed out and depressed and complaining and how he hates his job and how he's stuck and he wants to go. And he's literally trapped in a contract. Something's seriously wrong. And the masjid is empty, no one's there, but they say, we want you to be there. You have to be there. You have to do this, even though, just do it. And it's fine if they're taking care of him, and respecting him, and honoring him. But if they're not, then that's no doubt, that's mutafif. And it applies to anything else, a husband and a wife. You want your wife to be like Um Salama and Aisha. No doubt. You want every sunnah hadith applicable to your wife. But the, what you're willing to give your wife of time, of this or that, you're not willing at all. Not a shortcoming, but you're unwilling, what? Unwilling from the get-go. I'm not even willing to do it. Or I'll go around and cheat you out of it. A teacher and a student, this is a universal principle. Demanding, but not willing to give. And it should always be the what, Sheikh Khan? The opposite. You should be willing to give more than what you expect to receive, let alone what you demand. Everybody understand this? When you do this, Bidda Natala, you'll never have no heartbreak. You never be disappointed because you did your job. You did what was upon you and you asked the law for that which was what? For you. It doesn't mean that you can't demand your haq, but your heart will never be what? Broken by a human being. I didn't expect you to come, but I was what? I did my responsibility. I, handled, I did what I was supposed to do. Everybody understand this? Allah knows best. May Allah protect us from this major sin.